Welcome to another edition of Final Cut Pro 10 in under five minutes. I'm Mark Spencer. As we await the release of Final Cut Pro 10.4, which includes HDR support, I wanted to answer a question that many of you may be asking yourselves. What exactly is HDR? Well, I created this video to answer that exact question. A full description of HDR would take us down a technical rabbit hole, but there are some terms that are key to understanding what high dynamic range is all about and why it's so exciting. Note that this HDR has nothing to do with HDR photography, where increased tonal detail is squeezed into the same dynamic range by combining exposures. Here, HDR means significantly expanded dynamic range. By dynamic range, we are referring primarily to the range of brightness values of the display device rather than our source material. This brightness is measured in units called nits. One nit is the brightness of a candle spread over a square meter. The night sky is about 0.001 nits. A piece of paper under a lamp is about 50 nits. Clouds on a sunny day can be 35,000 nits. The sun is 1.6 billion nits. But the brightest thing our eyes can tolerate is about 50,000 nits. A typical modern computer screen has a brightness value of about 100 to 500 nits. But modern flat panel LED and OLED TVs are now able to display brightness values up to 1,000 nits, adding three to four additional stops of a dynamic range. This is where things start to get really interesting. Good old fashioned cathode ray tube televisions had a limit of 100 nits of brightness. That limit is part of not only the SD Rec 601 standard, but also part of the Rec 709 HD standard. That means when SD, HD, or even UHD video is encoded for display, all brightness values are squeezed into the range of 0 to 100 nits. The way the brightness values get recorded and displayed is through a mathematical conversion called a gamma curve. We've migrated from cathode ray tubes, or CRTs, to large HD and UHD flat panel displays capable of displaying much greater brightness values. But so far, we haven't been able to take advantage of this expanded range because the Rec. 709 standard sticks to this conventional gamma curve. So while we have moved from SD to HD and now to UHD, we've been stuck with standard dynamic range, or SDR. Standard dynamic range refers to video encoded with a conventional gamma curve, as well as a bit depth of 8 bits per sample and a dynamic range of 6.8 stops although with 10-bit encoding, you can get up to 10 stops. So SDR is limited to 100 nits of brightness. This means that a piece of paper in the sun will look just as bright as the sun itself on any display, even if that display is capable of displaying much brighter brightness values. The irony is that our video cameras have long been able to capture a much broader dynamic range than the limit of the Rec. 709 spec. If your camera can shoot in the log format, you're already capturing HDR material. That's because the log curve highly compresses the highlights to pack in a much larger dynamic range, up to around 14 stops. And cameras that can shoot and record linear raw without using a gamma curve can get that same expanded dynamic range without any loss of latitude due to compression. HDR has the ability to retain detail in very bright areas like specular highlights, was still capturing detail in dark shadow areas, technically up to 10,000 nits. The trick is in keeping that full dynamic range through editing and distribution. The broad availability of HDR-capable television sets over the past several years is driving this transition from SDR to HDR. Mm -hmm. 